So now we'll have a reading of the scripture and a prayer by Mr. Rick. He's back there in the hole. He's coming out. Okay. He looks nice. He's green and other colors, and he's doing good. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't this a beautiful Sunday morning? Christmas Eve. Golly. It's great, isn't it? <clears throat> the scripture I'm going to be using this morning comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. And the Magi had just departed. They had left the house, and they had left with gifts, left their gifts. And uh, I will start with verse 13. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, thank the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. And remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and he took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt. And remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt they called my son. That was Hosea that said that a few hundred years before. You know God he can do miracles anytime he wants to. Any way he wants to. But sometimes he kind of expects us to carry the little load ourselves. You know, he wanted Joseph to take Mary and the baby to Egypt. And uh, they were going to need they were going to need some money. They were going to have to buy food. They were going to have lodging. And, and they didn't know how long they were going to be there. But they knew that uh, they were going to need some money. And, and guess what? The Magi provided that for them. We don't know how much it was, and we don't even know how long they stayed in Egypt, but God provides those tools, like the gold and the frankincense and the uh, mirth. And uh, <clears throat> Joseph, he was dependent on God, but, you know, God, he was dependent on Joseph, too. And sometimes God wants to perform miracles in our lives, and he needs us to act on our faith for the things to get done. Now, whether it's health issues, financial issues, or maybe you've got a dependency problem of some sort, God will give you the tools that you need to take care of that problem. Amen. You know, and one of the, the, the greatest tools we have is this one right here. Amen. This is right here. Whatever problem you got, there's an answer in here. I encourage you to read it. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for all the tools at my disposal to fight against the battles of my life. I know that you are faithful and true in all things. You want only what is best for me, and please help me to see clearly your path for my life. Sometimes I tend to go off on my own, and I need the Holy Spirit to guide me. I thank you for watching over me, for watching over my family. I thank you for watching over this little church by the road. And for sending your son, Jesus, who was born of a virgin, who lived a perfect, sinless life and died on the cross for our sins and was resurrected by the power and the glory of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Good job. You're hired. Good. Some of you may have noticed the, I was out of sequence a little bit, but I'm a nonconformist, really, you know. And my wife's known that for 50 years, okay? So I'm just that way. Anyway, we're glad you come up here. Smile pretty and stand up straight. <laughs> come on, guys. Come on, guys. I don't know if this is a surprise. <laughs> I don't know if this, I thought you said Hark the Herald, Aunt Sherry. You told me we were singing that again. I don't know if this is a surprise or a torture, but, uh, <laughs> oh boy, but the men are, the men are going to sing. What are we singing? Oh, okay. <laughs> what are we singing? Joy to the world. We just sang Joy to the world. We're going to sing it again. It was so good that time. All right. we're, going to, we're going to do it again. All right, now guys, I want y'all to smile. No applause, please. Don't, don't applause, just throw money. First, second, third. First, second, and 
Four. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. First, second, and what? Four. Can they count? Well, I doubt it. Anybody else? We got plenty of room up here. Turn around, boy. Don't look at him. Alan's got a camera on. Turn around. Alan's got a camera on. There you go. What a crew. Yeah, really. All right, we ready. Well, you kick us off, Mary. Three different verses at you one time, but that's okay. It is a warm up here. Yeah, look, boy, now you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it gets hot up here. It gets warm. What did he say? That's David Charles. He's heard me say. Okay, Christmas Eve. Before I forget, out on the foyer. You'll find them. You'll find a basket of books of these and a basket of books of these. These have been donated. These are each lady here today is supposed to get one, and each man is supposed to get one of these. And these are donated by a church member who somebody gave them the money to do this, and so we just want to be thankful for them. It's devotion books, short prayers of wisdom for men, and sixty second refreshments for women. So those are out to have Miss Collette with us today. That's Troy's mama. And you know, y'all know small towns like this, you hear everything. Now, I accuse my wife of being Miss Kravitz. How many of y'all know some Miss Kravitz? They know everything. Well, I, I got the story this week that, that Troy and his wonderful wife were out Christmas shopping at a huge mall. And they got separated. And she got all her shopping done and couldn't find him. So she called him, and he answered the phone, and she said, well, I'm finished. Uh, I'm ready to go home. Are you ready? And he said, well, yeah, I'm ready. She said, well, where are you? I'll, I'll come to you. And he said, well, you remember when we first started dating, we came to this mall, and you saw that beautiful jewelry store, and they had that magnificent diamond ring in the window that you wanted, and I couldn't afford it at that time. Do you remember that? And she said, yes, I do. And her heart swelled up and tears come to her eyes. She thought, he is such a loving husband. He remembers that. He's going to buy me that ring for Christmas. And about that time, he said, I'm in the bookstore right next door. <laughs> and all the men said, don't you guys hate it when your wife says something like, you remember when? I can't remember yesterday, you know. But isn't it great to be in God's house? 
And we're not going to have an official scripture reading this morning. We're just going to kind of talk. I'm going to try to let you out early. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. We got a lot of people traveling and going with families and stuff like that. And, and it is the time to celebrate and spend time with your families. Because I tell you, you can, you can get one phone call or one text and your whole life changes forever. Uh, so enjoy time with your family, but also tell them what the real meaning is. The real meaning is not gifts we give each other, but it's the gift that God gave us, the gift of eternal life. There'd be no cross without the cradle. Jesus came to die, and, and this is Christmas Eve, and y'all know me. I like to think about the words. What do they mean? Have you ever thought about what the word Eve means? Christmas Eve. Now, my sister and her husband... They live in Tennessee. They don't have any grandchildren, so she's kind of adopted ours. And so they come down on what we call Christmas Eve Eve. And they came down last night and had a had a big blowout and the grandkids. And she buys them uh, goodie bags, and it's just got junk in it. But those kids love them junk bags, buddy. I mean, they have they have more fun going through it and looking at it and and all this kind of stuff. So. So what does Eve mean? Have you ever thought about it? It's, it's, it means the Eve of something special. Something special like Christmas Eve. Something special is going to happen. New Year's Eve. Something special is going to happen. It's like the night before you graduate high school or college. Something special is going to happen. And some of you may remember the Eve's of something great happening in your life. And it's great to think back about those moments of Eve the day before something happened. But we need to remember what Christmas Eve is about. Amen. It is about a God who loved us so much that he sent his son down here to die to pay a price that you and I could not pay and to change this world forever. How many remember back in 1969 when man first stepped on the moon? Y'all remember that? I was in Cullioca, Tennessee with my first cousin. We watched it on Sunday afternoon. <coughs> the president at that time said this, that this is the greatest event in history. Neil Armstrong said later, he said, this was not the greatest event in history. The greatest event in history was when God sent his son down to die for you and I. And as we give out gifts on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, remember what the greatest gift was and is. All the gifts that we give out tonight and, and tomorrow, they're going to pass away. They're, they're going to they're gonna rust or they're going to rot or they're going to... They're going to dissipate. They're going to be gone. But the gift that God gave to us will never, ever change. Amen. Never. For eternity, that gift is going to be there. And I'm going to hit three things real quickly that you can think about that God gave us on Christmas Eve. The first thing, it was the eve of a great Savior. Lord, we y'all know we need a Savior. Have y'all looked at this world today? This world needs a Savior. I've never seen so many people who are discouraged, downtrodden, heartbroken. And Jesus came because we needed a great Savior. In Genesis 3.15, back when, when sin first came into the world, do y'all know that that did not catch God by surprise? God had a plan even back in the book of Genesis he said this in Genesis 3, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He was talking about the Son of God. He was talking about Jesus Christ coming to defeat sin and Satan on this planet. That's what we needed. We, we didn't need a doctor. We didn't need an educated. We need a Savior. And the world still needs a Savior today. And if there's a time in your life where you have been saved, you need to be praising God today 
because the Christmas Eve is about a Savior coming into our lives. And it's also about the eve of when Jesus entered your life. Do you remember the day you got saved? I was nine years old at a Nazarene church with my dad preaching on a Sunday night. A little building in Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. The building's still standing. It's, it's not a church. I was sitting right there. Had no idea I was going to get saved that night. And yet the Holy Spirit dealt with this little nine-year-old boy, and I accepted Christ. And you know, I can't tell you the date, but I can tell you something happened. I, I can tell you that I met a Savior that night. And that Savior was planned from the beginning of time as we know it to come in to save a life of a little nine-year-old boy. And if you are here today and you are saved, think back about what happened in your life. See, we were lost in our sin. And Jesus said, I'll go and I'll make a way for them. The Apostle John tells us this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But listen to this. Verse 17 we leave out. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But to save the world through him. Amen. See that's, that's what Christmas Eve is about. This savior came not to condemn the world. Y'all the world was condemned already. He came to save the world. And if you're not saved today, I've got a question for you. Why are you not saved? We've got a man at our office that has never said he's never set foot in a church since he got old enough to make up his mind. His kids have never gone to church. He said the church would fall in if he walked in. I don't believe that. But I looked at him the other day and I said, I got a question. I said, I wonder why Jesus hadn't been able to save you yet. He walked off, never answered. So if you're here today or you're listening, why hadn't Jesus saved you? I guarantee you he's strong enough. I guarantee you he paid the price. I guarantee you he loves you. I guarantee you he's waiting for you. And I guarantee you he called you. So why are you not saved today? The only answer to that, Miss Betty, is me. Me. See, if you're not saved today, you rejected that Savior that came into the world. You rejected that call on your life. And you may have never looked at it that way before. But he sent his son not to condemn the world. We were cursed by sin and death. But God even fixed our death problem. Did you know that? We don't have to be afraid to die. I heard somebody say, I'm not afraid to die. I don't like the process. Listen, Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. Amen. The grave cannot hold us. The grave is going to bust open one day. And some of you right, right now may be on the Eve of experiencing salvation or experiencing the joy. So that brings me to number two. It is the eve of a great life. Listen, the world will tell you that living a sinful life is great. You can have all the gusto you want. You can have all the joy you want. You can have all of this you want. Listen, my friend, the world and Satan will lead you down the wrong path. I don't understand going out and getting drunk and waking up with a headache in the morning. I wake up with a headache without getting drunk. Anybody else? Can y'all can y'all identify? Amen. Thank you, David. I don't understand getting out and getting drunk and not remembering what I do. I don't remember what I did. I had a blast last night. I don't understand why we listen to the world when the world doesn't care about us. The world will lie to us. The world will cheat. If you'll just take this drink, everybody will love you. If you'll just wear these clothes, or if you'll just wear this perfume, or if you'll just do this, everything will be fine. Listen, the world is lying. Nothing is fine in the world without Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ said, I came, Ronnie, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. We have bought into this that once I become a Christian, I can never have fun again. Listen, my friend, 
The Bible says that laughter doeth good like a medicine. It's time that we as Christians put a smile on our face and went out and, and, and demonstrated to the world that we can have joy and we can have one. Yes, we have the same problems. Yes, we have the same turmoil. We have the same thing, same thing going in our life, but, but we have something the world doesn't have. We have the scripture where it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? We got somebody with us. Amen. And I got news for you. Listen to this. Not only is he with us, he's carrying us. Amen. Have you ever felt like you couldn't take one more step? Let's be honest. We all feel that way. Jesus will take it for you. Jesus will take it for you. He wants us to have a good life. Romans 8.1 says this. Paul said, Now therefore there is now no condemnation for those in Jesus Christ because the law of the Spirit in Jesus Christ has set you free Amen. from the law of sin and death. Amen. What does that mean? God looks at me and he does not see any condemnation. Yes, I sin. I, I sin every day. And you do too. But God looks at us through the blood of his beloved son. And he says there is now no more, no condemnation for you. Wow. That ought to make a Baptist smile. That ought to make a shout. Listen to what Peter says. Peter said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy... He has given us new birth, listen to this, into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Amen. Now listen, the baby was born. We love to talk about that. Jesus grew up and he died on the cross. We talk about that. But I'm going to tell you, we do not talk enough about the resurrection. Because the resurrection changed everything. Jesus was not the first man to die on the cross. He was not the last man to die on the cross. He was not the, the first leader to die. He was not the first prophet to die. But he was the first one to come out of the grave. Amen. And the only one to come out of the grave. You go to the tomb now. Brother Hugh's not real smart. He stood in line for hours to look at nothing. He's not there. He's not there, y'all. So listen, our hope is not found in this world. Our hope is not found in, in the gifts that we give each other. Our hope is in found in the heavenly blessings of God. Therefore, we are on the eve of a great life. And some of you listening and maybe here are on the eve of accepting Christ as your Savior and about to experience that great life. On Christmas Eve, we look forward to Christmas Day. Oh, I can remember as a child, I couldn't sleep. How many of y'all remember those days, man? Man, I couldn't wait. Our little house had a wood stove right in the middle of the living room. It wasn't, wasn't but four rooms and a bath. But my granny wouldn't let us get up till she had that wood stove fired back up and got the house warm. Well, I don't know how long it took, but I, I think it took two weeks the way it felt. <laughs> I mean, so when I was bouncing on that, I slept on a little twin bed till I was 19. And I, I, I remember just, I couldn't stand it. Listen, listen, we need to be that excited about the birth of Jesus Christ. We need to be that excited about seeing our loved ones saved. We need to be that excited about sharing the love of Jesus, not only at Christmas, but throughout the whole world. And that brings me to my last one, y'all. We're on the eve of a great eternity. Amen. If it hadn't been for the birth, if it hadn't been for the cross, if it hadn't been for the resurrection, we would not have any hope for eternity. Right. Listen to what it says in the book of Revelation 22. Then he showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. And down the middle of the city's main street, the tree of life was on each side of the river bearing 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the trees are for the healings of the nations. And there will no longer be any curse. 
The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city and the servants will worship Him. They will see His face and His name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more and people will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun because the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. Do you know where you're going when you die? Every one of us in here is going to die. You're either going to be raptured out or you're going to die, one or the other. You're not going to live forever. How many would want to live forever, really? Think about it. I used to think that. The older I get, the closer I'm ready to go home. Amen. This world has nothing for us. Amen. But if you were to die right now on Christmas Eve, where would you spend eternity? Sherry's granddad died on Christmas morning. I went to the hospital to see him before we went to Tennessee that morning. And before I got home, we had to call. He just passed away. I know where he is. Paul said, I don't want you to be like the pagans. They have no hope. He said, I want you to know where you're going. And that's why Jesus came. He came that we might be on the eve of something great. The eve of a Savior. The eve of a new life. And the eve of eternity. So listen, y'all. I, I, I saw something profound. It said Christmas Eve won't be on a Sunday again for I forget how many years. Six, eight years. And it went on to say this, that a lot of your children will be grown up and gone. A lot of your friends and family will be passed on. So what are we doing on this Christmas Eve to tell about Jesus Christ? So I want to chat. How many is having something tonight at your house? Raise your hand. All right. How many is having something in the morning or tomorrow at your house? Please don't forget to share the love of Jesus Christ. We always read the Christmas story at our house before we open gifts. Tonight, our Youngest grandson, who is 15, B-15, December 30th, is going to read the story. It's going to make Papa very emotional. But you know, all of our grandchildren are saved, except Elena, and she's eight, and she's asking questions. So make sure your family knows Jesus Christ. Make sure that your heart is ready. And make sure that you're living that abundant life because Jesus does not want no grumpy children. Y'all ever had grumpy children and grumpy grandchildren? <laughs> Madeline's back there grinning now, their head down. <laughs> God don't want no grumpy children. We ain't got nothing to be grumpy about, and that's not good English. Uh-oh, I'm echoing. But listen, y'all. I want y'all to enjoy tonight and tomorrow. God wants you to enjoy your life. And I just pray that in the next couple of days and the upcoming year that we all will get closer to God. Amen. I put in the bulletin and, and I'm about through. I'm going to let you out 15 minutes early. I put in the bulletin, reflect back on what God has done. And I know we have a lot here who have faced major loss. You've lost a loved one, a child, a mom, a dad, a brother, a sister. And that's terrible. And that is terrible. But don't focus on that. Focus on what God has done. Instant death is instant life, according to Apostle Paul. And it's okay to be sad that we miss them. But don't let that stop you from enjoying what God has given us. I watched our grandkids last night playing and having a good time. The only one that got in trouble was our dog last night. <laughs> Does y'all's dog like to eat paper? He don't. Our, if a piece of paper's on the floor, our dog's going to eat it, so he got put up. But he ain't been saved yet, okay? <laughs> he, ain't had, he ain't had his come to Jesus meeting yet. Oh, but, but listen, if you're not saved, why not? Why not? I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet.
And before I dismiss this, has anybody got anything you'd like to share? This is a this is a sharing church. Anybody anywhere? <clears throat>